Paul, and my family and I are parishioners here at St. Catherine. On Friday, April 26th at 7 p.m. here in the church, there will be a special evening of prayer called the Eucharistic Revival Night. It was inspired by the National Eucharistic Revival, a movement that began three years ago by the U.S. bishops to help Catholics restore and renew their relationship with Jesus in the Eucharist. This is the year in which parishes are encouraged to provide more opportunities for Catholics to do just that. And the Eucharistic Revival Night here on the 26th is an answer to that call. The evening will be led by Deacon Jeff Sutterman and by a visiting worship music team. It will be a time of adoration, praise and worship, testimony, scripture reading, reflection, and personal prayer time, followed by refreshments and fellowship. If you seek healing, if you want to pray for people you love, if you desire a closer relationship with God, please join us. All are welcome. There is no cost. Bring your kids, invite your friends. If you're planning to come, we'd be grateful if you would RSVP. It's not necessary, but it would really help us to have a better idea of attendee numbers. You can do this by visiting our table in the narthex after mass this weekend or next, or by using the QR code on the flyer in which you can find in the bulletin. Thank you for your kind attention, and we hope to see you at our Eucharistic Revival Night on the 26th of April. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God's peace be with you. 
I'd like to introduce Jennifer and Kyle, who bring their daughter, Mila Serafina, to be baptized in our midst this morning. And so I ask the two of you, in presenting this child for baptism, you are promising to bring her up as a follower of Jesus and the church, and you are promising for many years to come to teach her by your daily word and example that happiness and peace are to be found in loving God and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. And so if the two of you are ready to make and to keep this promise, please respond by saying we are. And I ask Mila's godparents if you are ready and willing to help these parents in their duties, but also by your own personal life to be a good example of Christian living for Mila to follow. If so, please respond by saying we are. And my friends, we are the wider community of faith in which this child will grow to the fullness of life and the powerful example of our faith and our love each day can make the unseen God visible and known to Mila. If you're willing to join me in being that kind of example, please respond by saying we are. And so, Meal of the whole Worldwide Church welcomes you with great joy. I now claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of the cross on your forehead, and I invite, in the name of all of us here, your parents and your godparents to do the same. Brothers and sisters, we now humbly ask the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be used for this baptism today, and will also be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. We pray that he may help us by his grace to remain faithful to the Holy Spirit that each one of us has received in that sacrament. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, we should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life Bless this water by which we seek to know your presence more fully in our lives. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be protected from all ills of spirit and body and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation and life through Christ our Lord.
And so we bow our heads in prayer. God of life, source of all faith, it is through the waters of baptism that you have raised us up in Jesus and given us life that endures. We ask you day by day to refine our faith, that we who have not seen the Christ may truly confess him as our Lord and God and share the blessedness of those who believe. Grant this through Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and we welcome the children in grades K through four to the front of the altar for the children's liturgy of the word. Children in grades K through four. So boys and girls, the Lord be with you. Okay, we'll try that again. The Lord be with you. Great. Um, you're gonna hear a story today in the gospel uh, about one of the apostles, his name is Thomas. And you know how G at Easter we celebrated how Jesus was raised from the dead. Um, the other apostles saw Jesus, but Thomas wasn't there, so. They're telling him about it, and Thomas says, well, I, I can't believe this until I see it for myself. And so um, this story is helping us to understand that sometimes we believe things. All of us are here today because we believe that Jesus is risen from the dead, but we didn't see that. We didn't see it happen. So there's things that we believe in life that sometimes we don't see. So for instance, um, on a cloudy day, um, do you believe that the sun is still in the sky even though you can't see it? Yeah, so you, you can't see it, but you know it's still there. Or um, if, uh, if, you're, if your mother or father loves you, raise your hand. Okay, that's most of you, that's good. Now, if, um, can you show me that love? Can you, can you hold it in your hands? No, see, but yeah, we believe that that love is there. But what we do know is that, um, our parents show our, their love in different ways. So like, what's some way that your parents show love to you? What's an example of that? Yeah. Say I love you. They say, I love you. How about else? Um, they help you. They help you. So you, you see the results of the love. And so that's the same thing here. All of us, we see the results of the life of Jesus that's risen in us. And so we hope that you learn that lesson as you go with God's blessing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There were no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, God's mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The hand of the Lord has struck with power. God's right hand is exalted. I shall not die, but live anew, declaring the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You who believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the nail marks, and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I came upon two stories this week that helped me understand this weekend's scripture. The first is titled, Not Dents, But Memories. Every now and then, a television commercial airs that does, does more than just sell something to us in 30 seconds. It portrays an authentic truth about the life that we live. A commercial currently airing for Jeep Grand Cherokee is just such a moment. Maybe you've seen the spot. A dad is packing up his belongings from his Jeep to pass the vehicle on to his college-bound daughter. As he packs, he notices the scratch on the roof he made while try trying to drive under a low-hanging tree limb. The rip in the rear seat upholstery caused by the family dog the day they brought it home. And the dent in the rear door made by his fiance when she excitedly ran into his arms crying, yes, the day he proposed. For him, the dents and the scratches and the tears are markers of his family life. Now he passes the legacy on to his daughter for her to make her own memories. The commercial ends with the words, there are no dents or scratches, only memories. Our lives are filled with scratches and dents, bruises and tears, and nail marks. Those scars teach us and define us. They teach us how to cope and to conquer life's biggest challenges and changes. They remind us of what is of value and of worth in our life. They reveal to us every day what is truly worth sacrificing and bleeding for. Our nail marks are the dents and the scratches, assures us that in God's love and peace, we can transform 
pain and grief, ridicule and suffering into experience of resurrection. This second Sunday of Easter celebrates the scars from our own Good Fridays that remain after our own struggles to grow in wisdom and grace. As Thomas and his brothers come to realize in today's gospel, divine mercy, our dents and scratches, our lasting signs of God's compassion, forgiveness and justice in our lives. Nail marks of healing and resurrections that we have experienced and have made possible for others by the crosses that we have taken up in the spirit of Jesus. The second story was titled, Raising the Dead. Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. The other disciples said to Thomas, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Have you ever raised someone from the dead? Hold on. Don't answer just yet. Theologian and peace activist and storyteller, Megan McKenna, believes that resurrection is more than just a miraculous ending to the life of Jesus. Resurrection can become a spiritual practice. We can be the means for restoring life to those entombed in fear, anger, and hopelessness. In her book, Not Counting Women and Children, Neglected Stories from the Bible, McKenna recalls leading a parish mission on the story in Luke's Gospel of Jesus, raising the widow's son from the dead in the village of Nain. McKenna writes about a challenge from the back of the church. Someone called out harshly, have you ever brought someone back from the dead? McKenna believes that life happens when we are interrupted and that some of the most powerful acts of resurrection happen to the least likely people. That we are the people of resurrection and hope, called to live passionately and compassionately with others, to defy death, to forgive, and to bring others back into our community, to do something that is life-giving, that fights death, and needless suffering. Her response was yes. She went on to say, every time I bring hope into a situation, every time I bring joy that shatters despair, every time I forgive others and give them back dignity and the possibility of a future with me and others in our community, Every time I listen to others and affirm them in their life. Every time I speak the truth in public. Every time I confront justice. Yes, I bring people back from the dead. The power of resurrection is bringing back to life someone given up for dead and consigned to the darkness. Restoring another to the beginning the life of belonging, of purpose, and of hope. What God has done in raising his son from the dead, we can do as well. When we seek to imitate God's endless mercy by pursuing justice, reconciliation, and peace. The Spirit of God breathed into us at birth gave us new life. The risen Christ breathes that same spirit into us again at baptism, enabling us to be ministers of his resurrection, instruments of his peace, and the means for realizing the kingdom of God in our own time and place. 
Easter faith empowers us to restore the lost to community, to bring hope to the despair and grieving, to advocate for justice for the abused and marginalized, to heal and mend hearts broken and fractured, to construct bridges across chasms of discord and animosity. This Easter season, may we recommit ourselves to the humbling and the selfless work of raising the dead to life. We now invite Mila to come forward with her parents and godparents as she is united with the risen Christ we celebrate in this season. Parents, godparents, members of St. Catherine Drexel, at the beginning of Mass, we committed ourselves to guiding and assisting Mila to grow up in Christ. If we are to be true to this commitment, our faith must be strong, and our deeds each day must be clearly the depth of that faith. We are aware, however, of our own human frailty, and so we now renew our faith commitment, asking God's blessings on our efforts to be true to it, as in place of the creed today, we renew our baptismal promises. And so I invite all those who are baptized to respond, I do. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by it? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith that is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so, Kyle and Jennifer, is it still your will that Mila should be baptized in the faith that we have just professed with you? She seems to be indicating her own desire, so. <laughs> Mila Serafina, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Mila, God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. <laughs> I'll give you a high five later. <laughs> as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you live always as a member of his body, sharing in his everlasting life. Okay. You have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. See in all the white garments that you wear the outward sign of your Christian dignity, and with your family and friends to help you by word and example, may you someday bring that dignity into God's everlasting kingdom. Parents, receive the light of Christ. This light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly, for this child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. She is to walk always as a child of the light, and all of us here pray that she may always keep the flame of faith alive in her heart. And so we show our congratulations to us on her baptism.
It is with deep trust in the compassion of God that we bring our needs before our ever-merciful God, joining in the response, Lord, hear our prayer. That all members of the church may bring Christ's peace into a world desperately in need of God's love, we pray to the Lord. That world leaders may use every opportunity to build trust, cooperation, and respect among the diversified nations and peoples of the world, let us pray to the Lord. That those who live in daily fear of violence may, like the disciples, experience the reassurance of the risen Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For the times when we struggle with doubt, that God's grace may sustain our faith, let us pray to the Lord. That we may extend mercy to our brothers and sisters and to ourselves for the wrongs of the past, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, that they may experience the healing presence of God in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. For Mila, who was born again of water and the Holy Spirit this morning, that she may enjoy the benefit of a loving family and a caring parish community, teaching her to love God and to imitate Christ, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Jackie Grunwell, that they may find rest in the internal embrace of our God, let us pray to the Lord. May God will hear the prayers that we now hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, when we are huddled in the darkness of our fear and doubt, you break through the locked doors of our hearts. Help us find the courage to ask you for what we most truly need, trusting that you are always with us in our time of need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The second collection this weekend, which is the Round Basket, is our monthly offering for Catholic school education, providing support for Frederick County tuition parish tuition assistance efforts. So thanks so much for supporting this educational ministry of the church.
Having made our offering for the work of the church, we also now unify our lives spiritually with these gifts of bread and wine, and we pray that that sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Accept, O Lord, this offering of your people that, renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, we may attain unending happiness and life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this Easter time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, filled with Easter joy, all people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord. We recognize you as the source of all holiness, and we ask you to make holy these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and after giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he then gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have seen us as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, the church spread all over the world and bring us to the fullness of love together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all those who lead and minister in the church. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on all of us that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, and all the saints who have served you throughout history, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. It is with faith in the promise of the kingdom that we pray now in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously granting peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sin, but rather on our faith and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Must be time to go home. For, for several reasons, it has become necessary to postpone the Easter retreat, which was scheduled for April the 20th until later in the year. If you made a registration fee, that will be returned to you through Faith Direct. Our Eucharistic Revival Night, though, as you heard before Mass, is being held on the 26th of April. This is an evening of adoration, praise, and worship, scripture reading, and fellowship. There's no cost, but it's important to sign up, and so you can do that at one of the tables after Mass today. If you were part of our rice pole program, those should be returned by next Sunday, the, the deadline, to the container that's between the holy water fountains. And so we invite Mila to come forward with her parents for a final blessing on her baptismal day. Kyle and Jennifer, God is the giver of all life, and he has brought joy to you both through this wondrous gift of your new child. And so as you set out on the long journey that will bring Mila to maturity, all of us here pray that God may grant you the light to see his way and the strength to follow it and the companionship of others on that spiritual journey. In God's good time, may you come at last to that eternal home which has been prepared for you from all eternity. And so I now declare that Mila is surely and certainly baptized, truly joined to Christ and to the people of God. And for that, we all say thanks be to God. Thank you. So congratulations again. So thanks so much for joining in worship this morning, and we stand now as we conclude our prayer. Grant, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds, in our hearts, and in the way that we live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God's blessing go with us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.